Bobby Bryant end up getting in behind. I believe it's Lawrence Gordon as he slides into the halfback. And the, the mistake that Gordon makes is he's in man-to-man -man coverage right here. But look where he's looking. He's looking back at the quarterback, not at the receiver he should be covering, running right down the hash mark in Robbie Bryant. It's on eight-play drive, 71 yards. Bryant's got two touchdowns in the game, seven on the year. And it's a five-touchdown lead for the Calgary Stampeders, Kirkland. And a flag down as he gets dragged down across the 30-yard line by Robert McCune. Well, you know you have an athlete when Robert McCune is making tackles on kickoff cover and is also a defensive end. And he's made a bunch. Came into the game with 10 special team tackles. Just off the league lead. Right up there in sacks for this team as well. And will be in the rotation defensively as he comes on the field. Louisville. A man, a man that has seen a few weight rooms. He runs a, a weight room. Those aren't play school guns. Those are the real deal. And all guns are firing here today for the home side at McMahon. They've outscored the Edmonton Eskimos now in just over six quarters, 96 to 20. And of course, the, the Calgary Stampeders defensively, remember a stat that continues to just grow is when they hold the opponent, 20 points or fewer. They are 19 and 0. Offside, Calgary. On the return, holding. Edmonton number 30. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Edmonton number 97. Will re-kick up 20 yards. So a collection of penalties, including the unnecessary roughness against Justin Cooper. Matt Bertram on the hold and an offside against the Stamps and the kickoff will come from midfield. A lot of the Edmonton Eskimos said that, you know, that loss a few weeks ago here in, in Calgary may have been the low point and a low point of a, of a season that's been very challenging and, and they've gone through so many different struggles, but the low point may be a, a quarter and a half away. Because remember, this is Labor Day and, and no matter what the records of these two teams, this game has tremendous intens intensity, has every single season. And teams that have not had winning records have come in here and upset teams that have, and, and it's just been always that intense and, and just nothing from the Edmonton Eskimo football team in this game. This is double dip rock bottom. Yeah. From midfield, maybe will just try to keep it in the park and that is the fullback Matthew Bertrand up across the 20 yard line and it's going to be a long second half and it would appear more flags as they unpile and tempers getting short after the play major foul unnecessary roughness Edmonton number 18 half the distance to the goal line first down T.J. Hill this time is called. Richie Hall is trying to get control of the troops. You know, and I know Richie Hall is, you talk, we've talked many times about coaches not getting outside of their personality and their, you know, their comfort zone of, of who they are as a person. But you, you almost think it's time for Richie Hall to lay down the law over there and just start to rip some guys who come off the bench and make mistakes like that. And they're st now starting to throw punches when they're down as far as they are. Pascal feasts the ball carrier, and Brandon Isaac drags him down. And there's another example of Chris Jones' defense. Everybody seems to be making plays. Brandon Isaac made his share. Well, he yeah, he comes in in the rotation, and that's that's the beauty of this is that it's a, it's a defense that when you look through it, they really don't have defenders in the top ten in tackles. But, but what they do is they do it collectively. 
I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Brandon Isaac on the rotation or we talk about Robert McCune. Personnel changes, the, the production doesn't. Second and 12, and there was movement on that line before the play got off. Chris Jones has, has changed things up a little bit where he now shows those different looks. Sometimes he'll put just one defensive lineman. Jock Climbing talked about this at halftime. One Procedure, Evan and 59. Half the distance to the goal line, remains second down. Calvin Armstrong, the latest Eskimo infraction. And, and it's confusing offenses right now because he, they'll put one defensive lineman down in that what's called that three-point stance on the line of scrimmage. And then he'll have the rest of them start from depth. Well, the Eskimos are starting from depth. <laughs> Second and 17 at their four. They'll swing it out. Kelly Campbell, can he get a block? Cuts it back. And Jawan Simpson there to bury him before he got to the 15. Well, there's the middle linebacker part of this impressive Calgary linebacking core. See all the movement. He starts out way wide on this play. <laughs> slides over. Flies to football. Doesn't allow a cutback lane. And when you look at collectively what they've done as a core, this linebacking group, we talk about Malik Jackson becoming sort of the blitzer with four sacks, but three for Jawan Simpson. And then the cover man is Keon Raymond. He'll go out and take that fifth receiver for the opposition's offense. Jawan Simpson, who was a healthy scratch for seven games last year. And suddenly, has found a home as a very key cog in this defense. Safety is conceded, so it's now a 42 to 5. Calgary lead midway through the third quarter. Back up your trouble. Close captioning of the CFL on TSN is brought to you by TELUS, proud sponsor of the Canadian Football League. Well, Henry Burris, apparently his day is done. Drew Tate is in. The backup quarterback who has thrown touchdown passes in each of the last three games. He's made some things happen himself, and so is John Cornish. Into the secondary as Cornish pounds it up to the 54-yard line. Untouched. I mean, where does John Cornish get contact here? Good block made right at the point of attack by Rob Cote. Chris, I think you and I could have picked up a first down through that hole. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> 18 yards back into the hands of Corners. Tries the right side, and this time it gets closed down as he crosses midfield. Let's take a look at what Henry Burris accomplished in just over a half tonight. Well, he started out by setting a milestone and moving into the top 10. Passing Peter Brock with a nice throw right there to King. Kenyon Ramble, 41 yarder, perfect pass on that one to Robbie Bryant, throw behind, Rambo's touchdown has been on the money, basically untouched in the pocket. <laughs> League leading 21 touchdown passes on the year. Here's second and six, and Tate takes a hit down the way, and RJ Franklin can't bring it in. Well, pretty much a perfect day for Henry Burris. And we'll be able to rest, and, and I like the decision. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer, really, but there have been times when coaches have gone with their starter longer. I mean, you saw the Montreal situation with Chris Leak. I mean, I know it was different because Adrian McPherson is their backup, but and he was injured. But this gives you know, John Hopnagel a chance to get Drew Tate in the game for you know, some serious minutes. Valuable reps for him. Eskimo has put some heat on Dales, but he gets it away. And this one bouncing around, and it'll be covered by Weldon Brown. Randy Chevrier within that five-yard restraining area. Introducing Rona Advantages. Take advantage and get more out of Rona. Save money. 
up to 5% on all your purchases for the year. Plus, collect more Air Miles reward miles. Up to two times more. Save money, collect extra Air Miles, and much more. Only with Rona Advantages. Apply now. Rona. Doing it right. Wendy's Kick for a Million is back. Go to Wendy's, upsize your combo, and get a game card for a chance to win instant prizes, including a 2011 Nissan Juke, Samsung LCD TVs, Timex Sports Watches with tap screen technology, and Wendy's gift cards and food prizes. Plus, get bonus entries for a chance to be one of four to go head-to-head -to, -head to kick for $1 million. Upsize a Wendy's combo and get a Kick for a Million game card today. Well, they only get stronger with the addition of Corey Mace with more. Here's Sarah Orleski. Well, Chris, as you mentioned earlier, that this is Corey Mace's first game in the CFL. His rights were acquired by the Stampeders, and he's been spending his time down at the Buffalo Bills organization since first being drafted in 2007. Since then, his rights have gone from Winnipeg, who drafted him, to Hamilton, to Toronto, and now with Calgary. Teammates said that they were a little bit leery about having someone come in, particularly with NFL experience at this point in the season, just because of sometimes the attitude that a player will bring with them but they said that hasn't been the case at all with Mace that he's been quiet he's just wanted to fit in and Corey says that's very much his personality he knows how lucky he is to be coming into this situation that they have a great group right now and he just wants to fit in and add any help that he can just what the stamps needed a little more help trapped or traded three times before playing it down and with that there comes tremendous expectation Native of Port Moody, and there's Jared Zabransky in. The play fake, and then the shovel pass, and Pascal Fees with a good hole, and up across the 40-yard line. Might as well get Jared Zabransky some some reps here as well. Even though quarterback not the issue in this lopsided game. Protecting the quarterback, more of an issue. Dropping passes from the quarterback, a big issue. Fourteen for Feast. It's a first down, and on a roll, Zabransky. There's another one through the hands of Jamaica Rectors. It really is. You know, and I, I mean, I hate to to harp on the negative. We can move on, but. It's been maybe the worst performance collectively of a receiving core all season long. That's the fifth drop by the Edmonton Eskimos. One turning into an interception for a touchdown and a couple that have ended series. Boy, Fred Stamps can't get back too soon, can he? No question. Zabransky rushed for 40 yards last week against the Rough Riders. In a game where he did provide a jolt to the offense. This one downfield is going to be intercepted. Brandon Browder's got his second. Intended for Jason Barnes, but Browder has four on the year with his second of the night. And Brandon Browner's just going to drop off of his man. Oregon State, Brandon Browner. Leaves his man down there. He sees Jared Zabransky locked into that corner out over the top to Barnes. So he just vacates. He leaves his man and goes down. And inside, Corey Mace had a chance here for possibly his first sack. He was in a little bit of a race with Tom Johnson to get to that quarterback. But Zabransky got rid of it in time. And it's in the hands of Brandon Brown. Five more giveaways by the Edmonton Eskimos. That's 33 giveaways on the season. And this is the ninth game. Nick Lewis just got his 500th catch. This one from Drew Tate that he throws the ball over to the bench, I think, as the souvenir. Well, there's, there's a trivia question for a few years from now that will stump some people. Because the automatic answer, of course, would be Henry Burris. But who threw the pass to put Nick Lewis at 500 in his career? And it will be Drew Tate. And this is seventh year. Speaking of consistency, Nick Lewis hits 500. Tate looks one way and 
Now he'll pull it down and lunge ahead. He'll be short of the first down. And the punt team will have to come on. Nick Lewis is also on pace for a personal best in touchdown catches and has really become a leader. And a leader that, that teammates all week long have been asked about and, and the word that kept coming up was unselfish. And, you know, maybe Nick Lewis was fighting a reputation that, that he wasn't an unselfish player early in his career. And he has become the leader of this group since Copeland left to Toronto. You know, Henry Burris has stolen a little thunder today, but I, I was going to suggest that Nick Lewis is in the mix as an MOP candidate for the first half of the season. Brilliant opening nine games. Kick is taken by Kirkland. So usually on every Friday night, we do our salute to the Canadian forces and perfect to do it on Labor Day as well. So we'd like to say a happy anniversary to the Queen's Own Rifles, Canada's oldest continuously serving infantry regiment is celebrating 150 years. Their unit motto, in peace prepared. The Toronto-based militia regiment has 46 battle honors to its credit, including one of the first units to attack in Vimy Ridge and to land on Juneau Beach during D-Day, the invasion of Normandy. 150 years of yes. excellence. Here's Zabransky looking downfield, and this one is, well, Kirkland stole it back. Looked like Brandon no. Smith. No, it is an interception. We've got a challenge in all likelihood. In fact, I think Kirkland's got the challenge flag and the ball after Brandon Smith looked like he caught it, and Kirkland came down.